thank you very much for having me to speak today about creating the conditions for change. This quote here from Professor Sir Michael Marmot um, really highlights why early intervention is key. We know that there's a lot of work to be done in Bradford, so where do we start? So let's start with providing sensitive and timely support for parents. Parents want the best for their children, and, um, but sometimes knowing what that best thing is or how to achieve it isn't always easy. We know that real life with young children and juggling all the um, plethora of, of issues that are around, such as housing, relationship breakdowns, poverty, working shifts, um, can mean that a healthy lifestyle is not always a top priority for families. And um, it makes thinking about changes um, to families' routines and habits a lot more difficult. And for parents living in deprived areas, it can feel like the odds are stacked against them. And when they're trying to give children the best start in life. So parents um, need skilled sensitive and timely support. But these words of a health visitor that attended Henry training, describing her work with the mother of an obese three-year-old are uncomfortably familiar to many of us working in public health and reminds us that getting the message across isn't always straightforward or easy. So using the Henry approach equips practitioners to have conversations with parents and carers to support behaviour change. And when it comes to helping families, the messenger is just as important as the message. So the skills and attitudes that underpin how we work with parents matter just as much as all of the knowledge that we have. So let's do an activity. So in your pack, you will find an outline of a person. So just working with the person next to you, inside the person, can you write or draw some things that a healthy person would experience, what they might do, what they might think, and what they might feel, and what other people might notice about them. And then around the outside of the person, write or draw what you think babies or children need for a healthy start. And I'll just give you a few minutes to do that activity. And if you haven't done so already, give your person a face. <laughs> so I'm interested to hear what kind of expression did you give your healthy person? A smile. A smile. Yeah, thank you. And that shows the link between um, physical and mental health. So when we do this activity with parents, they often come up with very similar ideas to the professionals um, that do that activity during the training. So the parents that we're working with, they know how to be healthy. So what is it that's getting in the way? So in our circle of concern here are just some of the many issues and obstacles that our families are facing. And when we, um, as practitioners, focus on these issues and obstacles, many of which we can't do anything about, it's inevitable that we may feel overwhelmed and helpless. We don't have a magic wand, unfortunately, but we do have control over where we put our attention and our focus. So let's focus on the things that we can do. So all of the things that we can do are shown in our circle of influence.
So creating a supportive environment by building and maintaining a trusting relationship can be thought of as opening the door. And the essential ingredient for being able to work with a family in any real depth and help them to make positive changes in their lives. It requires us to start by understanding the family and where they are, rather than imposing our own agenda or thoughts about what that family might need. As change is often a very emotive business, being aware of the feelings that might be around will help us to provide more effective and sensitive support. So let's think about how behaviour, feelings and needs link together. So behaviour is like the tip of an iceberg. There's a lot more going on under the surface. And we pick up clues from the parents that we work with um, about how they feel from the way that they look, from what they say, from what they don't say, and from how they behave. So as practitioners, we gain a sense of how parents are feeling by the behaviour that we observe. And we can interpret this as helpful behaviour or less helpful behaviour. So let's move on to another activity. So I'd like you to imagine that a parent or carer that you're working with needs to make a lifestyle change, but they're not sure if they can or if they even want to. So in pairs, I would like you to um, have a chat about the iceberg. And first of all, just in this top right corner here, under the clouds, I want you to write behaviours that the parent might show. So they could be frowning, they could withdraw from you. So write any behaviours under there. I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. So let's now dive under the surface and, un and imagine how that, that parent who's displaying that behaviour might be feeling. And write that in the middle right. So let's now move right to the bottom of the iceberg and let's think about what the parents might need if they're feeling that way. And write that at the bottom. So, for example, if the parent needed, to, needed support or to be heard, how would they be feeling now if their needs were being met? So write that at the left-hand side by the feelings. Okay, and if the parent's needs are being met and their feelings have changed, how are they going to behave now? Write that under the sun. Okay, so let's reflect on this then. So the feelings and the resulting behaviours are driven by underlying needs. These feelings and behaviours change depending on whether these needs are met or not. The needs stay the same. When we tune in to the feelings and unmet needs under a parent's behaviour, this helps us to think about the best place to start with them. And we can respond with understanding and empathy. I'm just going to share an example from practice. So the tip of the iceberg was Jade was referred to Henry by a health visitor. She had two children, a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Her older child had had to have all of his teeth removed because of decay. And the health visitor was hoping that some targeted support from Henry would avoid this happening to the two-year-old. A Henry practitioner went round to see Jade at home. She was reluctant to talk and seemed disinterested. Her two-year-old, Tyler, spent all his time with a dummy in his mouth and he only communicated by occasional shrieks. So diving under the behaviour, the practitioner started by listening and finding out more about Jade's life. She'd just moved to the area, she was living with her partner's family, and there were eight adults living in the same house. There was constant noise and people coming and going. She was feeling very isolated, she didn't feel like she had any control because it wasn't her house, and she didn't know anyone in the local area. She'd had her first child 
at a really young age and had left an abusive relationship when he was a baby. And now the stress of coping with two children, not having their own home and having very little money was affecting her current relationship and her and her partner had started arguing. Jade felt frightened when her partner got angry because of a past experience of living with violence. She was feeling intimidated and judged by his family because of the children's behaviour. Their grandma was giving them, the children lots of sugary snacks and drinks and Jade was using sweets to keep them quiet. Over the last few months, things had really got on top of Jade and she was feeling very low and trapped. So responding to her needs. The practitioner recognised that building Jade's self-esteem and addressing her emotional needs would need to happen before they could focus on lifestyle changes. Jade wasn't comfortable talking in the house because her partner's family were around all the time, so they agreed to meet at a local family centre. And gradually, Jade started to talk more openly and found it a great relief to feel that someone cared and was willing to listen. She was surprised when they talked about the things that were going well because she'd expected to be told about all the things that she was getting wrong. The sessions gave her confidence to start talking, uh, sorry, to start taking Tyler to play sessions at the family centre. And he enjoyed joining in. And although he still used his dummy, he used it less and he started to say a few words. And seeing the positive impact on Tyler motivated Jade to play with him more at home. And she proudly reported at one session that she'd bought him a toy. So recognizing that someone needs to be heard and understood tells us that listening is going to be more of a helpful tool than giving advice. And the vast majority of parents are trying to do the best they can in the situation that they find themselves. So this diagram illustrates how using empathy, strengths and paraphrasing, skilled questioning and that innate desire to understand the parent's map of the world help to create the conditions for change. Please do get in touch with us if you want to find out any more about Henry, then please do some further reading. And if you haven't already, please go and see the fabulous Henry team at the stall out in the um, foyer. And um, I'm going to end with a quote from one of our Bradford parents that we work with. Henry has had a massive impact on my family. One of the issues was thinking our children had to finish everything on their plates. It's extremely important for them to recognise when they're full, so listening to them is essential. Giving the children a choice is also very important as it gives them independence. We have a much happier home now as we have more insight and understanding of our children. Thank you.